Back here at Nationals Park, and you just heard the Nationals talk about this bolstered NL East, and now I'm joined by Mark Zuckerman and Byron Kerr of MassInSports.com. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here. The sun is out. It's opening right day. It doesn't face. get any better than this. <laughs> Spotlight right? is exactly. on us. This has actually increased the temperature by about 20 degrees. Yeah, in like I like five it. Minutes. I kind of like this. So let's talk about the NL East because the players just did. The Phillies, obviously, they got Harper. They made some major upgrades in their infield, getting Gene Segura. The Braves, they got Josh Donaldson, and they're the reigning NL East champion. This team, this division looks a whole lot more loaded this year, and last year it was pretty competitive. Yeah, I, I think, uh, first of all, I think it's great that four teams are actually trying to win, which yeah. is not the case in every division. Yeah, um, I think there's a potential for any one of the four. They all have their issues. There isn't a clear-cut, uh, obvious favorite here, but um, I would love to see like a legitimate at least two or three team race right. down to the wire, if not more than that. And I don't know that you can clearly say, hey, this one is obviously the favorite. I know the Nats, uh, the projection models give them a slight edge, but all four teams give about a, at least a 20% chance, which is pretty astounding. I went with the Braves just because they won 90 games last year. All that young talent they have. I know they didn't do as much in the off season, but they've got young pitchers that are supposed to come up this year. I'm going to give them some credit and say the last year was not a fluke. Um, we'll see, but I, I think you can make an argument for any one of the four. Yeah, I mean, I really like what the Mets have done now that Brody is in charge. They have some direction. They certainly have someone who knows what he's doing as far as picking players. They have a great rotation that we're going to see beginning today uh, with Jake DeGrom and Noah Syndergaard starting it off. So I like what they have. And the Phillies, I think, are going to make a huge splash because of the influence of Bryce Harper and what he'll do for that city. I see them getting off to a really good start this year and maybe fading a little bit, just like they did last year. And Atlanta, because they're division champions, are still the ones that you have to kind of knock off. And they still have a solid team, a very young core that's going to be good for a long time. Do you guys see anybody in this division running away with it or winning 100 games or doing anything like that? Or do you see it as more a scenario where they just beat up on each other and we get maybe a, a wild card team in there as well and we get a bunch of 92, 93 game winners? I actually went like really bold and picked three teams to make it. Three. I have the Braves wow. winning the division and then the Nats and Phillies in an epic wild Could card see that. game <laughs> in this ballpark with Bryce Harper. How, maybe there's a little sentimentality there yeah. and emotion with that pick. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's more likely the division winner is in the 93-94 range and yeah. then several teams in that 88 to 93-94 range as opposed to one of them uh, you know, winning 100. But the other part is the Marlins, God bless them, <laughs> are going to play a major role in deciding this division because whoever beats them the most is going to have an advantage. So like going 11-8 and eight against those guys is not going to be enough. You've got to go 14-5, and 15-4 and four against them to separate yourself. And, and so in a weird way, I think they may actually – um, impact the race. I absolutely think they will. I mean, they've got some players. They have nothing to lose kind of feeling down in South Florida. Everybody thinks that they've, they've given up before they even started. So I think they're going to be better than people might think. And you look back at divisional records from the past five NL East division title winners, 45, 46, 47. That's a lot of wins inside the division when you have three teams like the Mets, the Nats, and the Phillies that are supposedly supposed to be pretty good. So watch those divisional matchups. I like the way that the the schedule kind of lines up. We're going to see how good the Nats are here in the yeah, first right couple of weeks the when they play so many East teams. Yeah. They say you have to beat the best to be the best. You also have to beat the worst in the Marlins in this yeah. case. So let's talk about the young players because, Byron, that also happens to be your specialty on MassInSports.com. Let's talk about Jake Knoll specifically. Some people might have done a double take when they saw this initial opening day roster and saw Jake Knoll's name on there. Tell us a little bit about him. I had a lot of fun talking to him. Obviously, Florida Gulf Coast product. He did sensationally well in college, has worked his way up uh, to get to where he is right now. Had a great start to spring training in West Palm Beach, was hitting the ball very well. I asked him, you know, are you an outfielder or are you an infielder? He says, I can play any spot. Of course, a player is going to say that, but he gives versatility, and that's what we hear from Davey Martinez all the time. He talks about super use, super utility guys. Right handed bat's going to be very important for them. But with Howie Kendrick looming, and with Michael A. Taylor coming back soon as well. We may not see too much of Jake <laughs> yeah. Knoll on the field, but I still think it's a sensational story. I got to sit down and talk to him. I always ask these guys, how do you get better from season to season? Do you watch video a lot? And he says, no, I don't like to watch video of myself. I hate the way my <laughs> swing looks. I thought that was a great, a great comment from him. And you know, you always think these guys are always breaking down their videos. Pitchers certainly do that yeah. after they have their outings. But, but Jake likes to work a lot on the little things in the cage. And I think that's a, a reason why his hitting has become more consistent and I don't think he's going to make too many mistakes in the infield as well so he can play first second and third but I don't know when he's going to get in the lineup besides being a pinch hitter in the first couple weeks here's what I think they could do though if Ryan Zimmerman needs a day off put mm -hmm. Jake Noll in there put a Zimmerman jersey on him 
A lot of people won't realize it. They're ide- <laughs> they, they look doppelgangers. Like- <laughs> they really look <laughs> they alike. They do look a lot alike. I, it w- if from a distance, it would certainly fool a lot of people if they tried to pull that off. Absolutely. And you know Ryan Zimmerman could always use some days off. Exactly. So we could yeah, throw him exactly. in there as well. All right. Byron Kerr, Mark Zuckerman of MassInSports.com. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here.